Oil paints are named as such because oil is the binder for their pigments. Because of this, oil paints are notorious for how long they take to dry. Depending on how thickly they are applied, this process can take a matter of hours or a matter of weeks. Even when the surface of an oil painting is dry to the touch, some artists claim that it takes upwards of six months for the oil to dry completely. Although there are a number of mediums today that can be mixed into oil paints to either speed up or slow down their drying time. Glazing is a traditional painting technique that has been used by oil painters for hundreds of years. With the glazing technique, the pigment is thinned down greatly by the use of a vehicle. The, paint usu the paint's usual toothpaste-like consistency is replaced by one that more closely resembles a light soup. The fluid paint is applied in numerous thin glazes until the image depicted begins to develop its final level of opacity. When a glazed painting is viewed from an angle, there appears to be little or no actual depth to the surface of the painting. Its surface is generally smooth to the touch, like that of a mirror. Although it's never appropriate to touch a painting in person, because the oils in your hands can compromise the integrity of the fragile paints. When light shines into the surface of a glazed painting, you can see through the many stacked, transparent layers. This is similar to the way that you can see through the surface of skin to the veins, capillaries, and tendons. This 17th century Dutch painter, Jan Vermeer, was very well known for his glazed painting style. His serene images often convey the soft light of morning and give us a glimpse into the quiet, domestic life of the time. For many artists of this time, the ability of glazed oils to capture light created an allegory to the human desire for finding an inner spiritual light. The contemporary German painter Gerhard Richter is an artist who continues to explore the potential of the glazed surface. Richter is from a tradition of artists since the 1970s called the photorealists. Instead of drawing and painting from live models, these artists choose to work from photographic images. In his paintings, Richter attempts to emulate his source photos so closely that, in reproduction, a viewer may not be able to tell the difference between the painting and its original source. Richter will often replicate photographic imperfections such as streaks and blurred focus. Even though many of his paintings are much larger than average photographs, their smooth, shiny, glazed surfaces help to remind us of those qualities that they share with the photos. Impasto is a painting technique where the paint is applied very thickly with a brush or a palette knife. Artists who paint in the impasto style generally do not use vehicles to thin their paints. When viewed from an angle, the surfaces of these paintings have a physical dimension that projects from the canvas like a series of hills and valleys. The late 19th century Dutch painter Vincent van Gogh made some of the first work that popularized the impasto painting technique. Before this time, good painting was considered to create the greatest illusion of depth. Paintings with glass-like surfaces were revered for their ability to look like literal windows into other spaces. The work of painters like Van Gogh began to break this illusion of reality by acknowledging that a painting is a dimensional object rather than a flat plane. This American pop artist, Wayne Thiebaud, continues to explore the potential of impasto. Like many of his fellow pop artists from the 1960s, Thiebaud took interest in conveying what he felt was at the essence of American consumer culture. In his case, he took particular interest in our culture of fast food and confections. In Thibaut's paintings, the thickly applied paint transforms into the sumptuous icings and crusts that he depicts. Frank Auerbach is a contemporary British painter who takes the impasto style to its extreme. His working process involves building up the paint until it globs onto the canvas and then scraping it off with a palette knife only to build it back up again. He works from live models, and he's been known to spend hundreds of hours with a specific painting until he considers the piece finished. For Auerbach, 
the painting is like a living thing. Its thick, gooey surface is a document that captures the history of the time spent between the artist, the sitter, and the canvas. By thinking in this way, Auerbach believes that every decision made while painting is evident in the painting's final surface.